Yes guys, how are you doing? Welcome down to the channel, Andy Carter here. Thanks very much for checking out today's content. And today we're talking about slice. I'm just gonna give you a really simple drill how you can help prevent the slice. I'm not gonna say you're gonna stop slicing it because stopping slicing the golf ball takes practice. It takes dedication and it takes an understanding of swing path. So today's video, I'm hoping to give you that as well. So if you are a slicer, I feel like you know why you slice it. You know that the, the club path generally comes from out to in, the club face is open to the path which creates added height. So when we, when we cut across the ball, so for a right-handed golfer, cutting across the ball means swinging to the left of the target. When the ball then comes up with more height and more off to the right, it's because the club face is then open or pointing right of the swing so the swing is going to the left the club face is pointing either at the target or to the right of the target which tends to mean the ball starts down the target line or to the right of the target and then curves to the right a little bit more when we do that we are adding lofts so therefore we're adding loads of height we're adding loads of spin we've added the curvature and we've lost a lot of distance the setup i've got here is just simple some tees you could even use your head cover you could use a towel you could use anything you know what if you're really struggling with the drill the best way to stop yourself doing it stick your phone there put your ipad there anything that's gonna prevent you from really not wanting to cut across that golf ball make it valuable no i'm joking don't do that uh, but a couple of tees head cover great little way of then giving yourself that visual to try and avoid it. Sometimes we can get a little bit too caught up on how are we gonna do it? How do I get the golf club more neutral? How do I get the golf club a little bit more on the inside? Or how do I get the golf club simply to not cut across the golf ball as much? However, put something in the way, the body can react. I'm not saying it definitely will react either. I don't come on these golf tips and say, this will absolutely stop your slice because it won't. We need to practice it. It takes a lot of hard work. And I'm a golf coach, I coach, 10 hours a day, five days a week. So I'm not gonna be the one that stands here and starts giving up all these magical ideas and drills that automatically stop you doing something because that's not real. That's not the world that we live in and that's not gonna happen. However, doing these types of drills on a daily basis or maybe every other day or even if it's three times a week, we can turn a slice into a fade. Now you've added 20 yards of distance. If you can keep going, you keep working, you keep really grinding it out, because that's what it takes. It takes a lot of hard work to change the golf swing. To keep really grinding it out. Yeah, you might one day turn it into a draw. And if you turn it into a draw from a slice, you are talking about 40 to 50 yards difference in distances. So the, the results at the end could be amazing. But you know what? Worst minute, smallest case scenario, Let's go from slice to fade. Let's get the ball traveling further. Let's get the amount of curvature on the ball less. Okay, so that's what I do day in, day out for golf, with golfers, work with them, give them these really good drills that you can kind of go and do. And if we can affect the swing path from being 10 degrees out to in and make it five degrees out to in, you're gonna be a better golfer. So that's the one thing you have gotta be really careful of with golf tips. There's no magic formula. There's no quick fix. There's no, amazing way that suddenly after watching one video you're going to hit fade slice to draw so you got to, it does take work but you know what if you're here watching this video then you're up for the work aren't you i can feel it and i know it right let's get stuck into this tip all right, this is a drill that I do a lot of the time with people that I'm coaching because I want people to get visual and some, for some golfers it's a huge help. And I find for most golfers it's actually a big help when you start to get visual because the, we're going to get instant feedback from these tees or from a head cover or whatever, or whatever you put down because if you hit the tees, you can automatically know and assume that the golf club has swung from out to in. So as I was saying before in the introduction, the out to in is coming across the golf ball. So if my target line's at the building that you can see in the distance, which is where the flags are, my swing path moves to the left and my club face is open to the swing path. So my club face is right of the swing path, which means I've added loft, height, curve. Three absolute no-nos. Okay, so how I'm gonna set this drill up is I've got the golf ball around about one club head width to the left side of the tees. So as soon as I swing this golf club, if I cut across it, these tees are coming out of the ground, I'm gonna break them or whatever, so I've got instant feedback. Because a lot of golfers do actually say, I don't feel it, I didn't feel 
that I swung it from out to in, and that's fine. You're not supposed to really feel it. You'd like it nice if you can, but if you can't, it's because it's all happening so fast. It's all very, um, it's all very instinctive. So what we've got to try and do is we're working the swing to be a little bit more kind of in line with the with the right leg or with the with the outside with, with the backside. Get the club a little bit more from behind the body. So we're encouraging the golf club to come more from the inside. So the immediate feedback I can give myself there is that I've come into the golf ball, I've managed to hit ball first, I've got a little divot inside of the tee mark, I've hit a nice little strike. The minute I, the minute I swing the golf club from out to in, these tees are coming out of the ground, Let's put that there, these tees are coming out of the ground, and I hit them on the way down. I, I, I didn't come out of the ground, I just didn't hit the ball very hard, but I hit the tee on the way through, I felt it on my, on my club. So, Immediately, I've got feedback. I know the swing went from out to in, I hit the tees, and I'm trying to avoid them. Now, then you can start to be a little bit more conscious of exactly how you swing to avoid the tees, because now we get to the top of the swing, keep the club more on the inside, and as I see the club kind of flashing through at this point, I can see that I'm miles away from the tees. So now I'm doing the opposite of what I normally would do. My hands are a lot more connected to my body and it's going to be a lot easier for my, my hips to rotate because a lot of golfers that slice the ball say, I don't rotate enough through the ball. And you know why? Because the golf club, when it's on the outside of the line, it's working back towards your body. We see a lot of golfers that slice the ball actually lock out the knees as they come back into the ball. It's because you've got no space. It's not because you don't want to or you can't, it's because you don't have the space to do it. So if the golf club starts to work outside and work in towards your body, the legs generally start to lock out and straighten up and you're obviously gonna create even less power, not only from the swing path and the amount of loft and the amount of curve on the ball, but the lack of body rotation. As soon as you start to feel the club come a little bit more from behind the body here, the best way to actually hit the ball then is to utilize the body a lot more. So with the way you're, the way you're wanting to swing, the way you're wanting to move the hips is now facilitated by the way the club comes back down to the ball as well. Massively, massively important that we get this club into the, into the right position on the way back down. We've, we've avoided the tees and we've got ourselves into a nice, rotational finish position. Now, here I'm just using a little 9-iron. I'm clipping a 9-iron, probably going no more than 100 yards, just taking all my distance out of it, and I'm trying to get the feel for strike. I'm trying to get the feel for swing path, because that's also a thing. A lot of golfers say, I can't slow my swing down. I can't do it. We can, we just don't know how to do it yet. That's the key thing. Everyone can slow down and speed up. We just don't know how to physically do it. So, and it's also because that also tells me that you're not really in control of what you're doing. You're not really in control of where that club is because to, to actually be in control of it, you've got to slow down to feel it, to put it into position. You've got to slow down to put it into the right position to hit the golf ball. If you're swinging it quicker, that means you're, you're swinging on instinct. And if you're swinging on instinct and you're a slicer, you're gonna slice it, you're gonna cut across the golf ball. So making all these deductions in your mind as you're starting to do it, thinking about it from a different perspective is also so important. Like I said, I'm not bothered if a golf ball moves left to right or right to left in the air. We wanna make sure we're maximizing the outcome. A, fade's, a fade to me, is no worse than a draw. A draw is not the be all and end all. It's not the holy grail. However, if you've been slicing the golf ball for a long time, it is the holy grail. You'd rather see, you'd rather see a hook, which is the same fault, isn't it? The opposite way around. So as a slicer, you'd rather see a hook because it's a different type of shape. So I completely understand that a slicer, when they see a fade, a good fade, is still not that happy, but take it on the golf course and you will be. So there's nothing wrong with a little fade. but we all want that draw. I know that, I know, I'm not stupid. I see it every day, we all want the draw. I do too as well, to be fair. So working with these little drills here, we've got a nice little shallow divot, finding the middle of the club face, finding the ball then turf, avoiding hitting these tees, feeling the club working a little more behind the body, feeling the lower body working a little bit more actively through the ball is massively important. Now, one of the things I like to use, I'm just gonna go off piece a little bit here, because I use this analogy all the time with people that I'm coaching, a lot of beginners as well in particular. You wanna throw the ball far, okay? A slicer goes over the top, and then because their arms are out here, they throw like, they would effectively throw a golf ball like that, because they can't utilize the hips. 
Somebody that was trying to hit the ball further and they pull the, pull the ball from more behind the body can then open the hips. And once they open the hips, the ball comes out a little bit flatter and it'll go a little bit further. But someone that throws from over here won't be able to use the hips as much. It's exactly the same when you're coming into a golf swing. So for golfers that want to use your hips more, but you can't because of your slice, is you need to fix the swing path first before you can fix the hips. But the hips are not the problem. The hips are a consequence of where the club is working on the outside on the way down, okay? Making sure the club works on the inside and then rotates. Guys, I hope that's been a big help to you. Please do comment below. If you're new to the channel, please do hit that subscribe button as well. Loads more tips coming out over the summer. Uh, but for today, thank you very much for checking out the channel and I'll see you again.